Great. Good afternoon again. I'm Sarah Holly. I am the Health and Wellness Service Team Race and Health Equity um, Administrator. You are joining us for our third virtual community town hall for veteran services, benefits, health care, and other assistance. Um, you're here to learn about the COVID-19 services available from the county. Just some housekeeping things. We are recording this town hall for documentation and language and translation purposes. We cannot get into any specific um, cases or client cases to discuss private or confidential information um, about residents that we serve on this town hall. I would ask that you mute your phone lines throughout the call. We will have a portion of this um, town hall that will be open for community questions and comments for our director and her staff, Ms. Maria Weatherall. And so I'll proceed. Um, the agenda for this town hall, again, we'll have our um, deputy county manager, Karen Saltis, will provide some opening remarks. Um, Maria Weatherall will provide the overview of what veteran services is doing to respond during this COVID-19 19 emergency. And then we'll have a discussion with community. That is the primary goal of this town hall. So just um, briefly, we want to have some town hall agreements. Again, if you could keep your phone and device on mute, if you are not speaking, that would be great. Um, please listen actively and respect others when they are talking or in the chat box, I should say. <laughs> um, speak from your own experience instead of generalizing. Don't be afraid to respectfully challenge one another by asking questions, but please refrain from any personal attacks and really focus on the ideas on um, the conversation at hand. And then again, participate to the fullest of your ability. Um, this is about community growth, Ramsey County growth, and it really depends on the inclusion of every individual voice on this call today. The goal here is not to agree, it's to really gain a better and deeper understanding of veteran services and how Ramsey County can, can serve our vets and, and community throughout this time and beyond. Please, you know, step up and step back also during the town hall. We wanna make sure that everybody's clear about um, the purpose and expectations. Here we wanna again share resources and services that are available to those in need throughout Ramsey County, specifically veterans today. Um, answer any questions that you have about the resources and services that are provided thus far during our COVID-19 response. And then of course, Ramsey County will work to act on and be responsive to the needs of communities and the questions that you have through action, follow-up and updates on progress. So now I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Karen Saltis. All right. Sarah, just wondering if you were going to share the PowerPoint as we go along? Yes, sorry. Okay, great, thank uh, you. Not, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Saltis and I'm the Interim Deputy County Manager for the Health and Wellness Service Team, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I uh, want to talk just a little bit about the vision of Ramsey County is a vibrant community where all are valued and thrive. And our mission is a county of excellence, working with you to enhance our quality of life. So during these town halls, Ramsey County will actively engage in authentic and constructive community dialogue to build a more responsive and effective organization during and after the COVID response. So on to the next slide is what is part of the health and wellness service team. So we have many different departments as part of the health and wellness service team. So we have community corrections, financial assistance, health and wellness admin. We have public health, social services, which also includes the Lake Owasso residents and the care center. And last but not least, Maria is veteran services. Just want to talk very briefly about the strategic priorities of the county. So the two that are highlighted there are regarding advanced, advancing racial and health equity in all decision making and inclusive, effective, and meaningful community engagement. So we feel the county has a very important role and responsibility to advance racial and health equity with an emphasis on fair, inclusive, and transparent processes and policies. And in order to attain equitable outcomes, shared power and decision making will be used to strengthen our programs and services so that residents most impacted can contribute to improving outcomes to ensure all residents have opportunities to prosper. 
So we feel that our town halls to, uh, today and the other ones are, are speaking right to these priorities and we are uh, excited about uh, jumping in here and I will turn it back to Sarah. Thank you, Karen. So just if you're joining the call, welcome. This is our Veteran Services um, Community Virtual Town Hall. This afternoon, if you are just joining us, please make sure that you put your name and agency. And if you feel comfortable, your email address in the chat box, that way we can get in touch with you and know that you are present today. Um, a few other housekeeping things, we will share the PowerPoint slideshow and the recording on our Ramsey County COVID-19 racial um, equity and community engagement website, and we'll share that information with you. Um, we are um, recording this on um, Town Hall. We are also on Facebook Live right now, which we're really excited about. And so please, if you have questions during this time period, don't hesitate to type your information into the chat. Questions will be taken through the chat box. Um, we'll also be getting emails. If you want to email the racial equity at ramseycounty.us box, feel free to do that. But we're really advocating that people use the chat box today for questions. And so um, before we jump into the community discussion, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Maria Weatherall. She's the Director of Veteran Services. Thanks, Sarah, and thanks to everyone who's joining us today. Um, for those of you who I haven't met, very great to have you with us. Um, Maria Weatherall from Ramsey County Veteran Services, and I am joined by my staff today, um, William Nygaard, um, Christina Rost, Kristen Nord, uh, Chris Vinden, Deb Severson, um, all, Don Lindstrom are all with us on the call, so they'll help me out with uh, navigating any questions you might have. So Veteran Services is, exists because of statute and it's uh, designed to provide a local expert to give veterans and their surviving spouses, their families, and those that are advocating for veterans assistance with applying for health care, filing claims for disability and pension benefits, um, and connecting veterans with any uh, resources that might have value to them wherever they're at in their lives. Um, so it becomes particularly important in a time like we're in right now that um, you do have that local support. So we want you to know that Veteran Services, Ramsey County Veteran Services is open for business and we are available to serve people by phone and email. Um, we're open our regular business hours, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, and I will verify that we are working um, extra hard during that time and um, outside of that time as well to be responsive to your needs. Um, if you'd like to reach us, you can contact our offices um, at our main phone number, which is provided there for you, um, or contact us through Ask Veteran Services at um, the Ramsey County website. Um, any of these options will um, find us responding to your call and connecting you with a veteran service officer or assistant, um, one of our social workers um, or our out outreach workers. Um, to assist you with whatever your needs might be. Um, we do start with an assessment of each person, trying to understand where they are, what they might benefit from um, in terms of our assistance. So right now, um, as we all know, we are in COVID times. And um, we are working in cooperation with our partners in the community. Um, and one of the primary resources that we are advocating for is provided for, for by the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, they have um, provided two specific grants for veterans, and those are veterans that, that um, meet the state definition of veterans, which is fairly complicated. Um, ideally, you would just call us and we're gonna like walk you through your eligibility. Um, they include a one-time grant, um, they're calling a disaster relief grant, and it is $1,000 that is paid directly to veterans and their families to help mitigate the negative effects of, um, of COVID on families' um, household budgets, their expenses, um, many people are laid off. Um, so this, this grant is designed to try and provide some um, one-time relief in the form of a $1,000 grant. The second that the uh, Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs is offering is the COVID Special Needs Grant. Um, the Special Needs Grant is designed to pay for a variety of different expenses that um, families might be struggling with at this particular point in time. 
Um, and they include things like rent, mortgage, utilities, medical bills. Um, at this point in time, I think they're actually even paying for expenses that are uh, more specific in terms of utilities. Um, so a, a broad spectrum, repairs to the home, um, repairs to vehicles if you need to get to work, that type of thing. These are one-time grants that are associated with a need that um, has um, developed because of, a, of COVID loss of income or other. Um, and they are up to $3,000 and they are paid directly to the vendor. Um, so we want to encourage all of you who might know a veteran um, who is experiencing any kind of financial loss as a result of the COVID um, disaster that to apply um, and the state does have a pretty specific um, application process and they do have access provided for by their website but we are also advocating um, to assist you um, with the processes associated with applying for that um, that benefit um, we will be outreaching with a document um, I think Sarah you have that document here in your presentation Mm -hmm. um, and we'll provide additional information using this document to um, those that we're linked to. Um, so with that, I'd really like to like take an opportunity to um, answer any questions that anyone might have um, about Ramsey County Veterans Services, about the benefits that we advocate on behalf of, of any of our partners, any of the work that we're doing in the community um, in response to homelessness, um, the Veterans Court, whatever your questions might be, we're open to those. Thank you, Maria. And I just want to mention really quickly that Maria gave out great information on a couple of the slides. If you are on the telephone um, and not directly logged into Zoom, um, the number that you can reach Maria's um, department is 651-266-2545. We will share these slides out on the Ramsey County website. We also will share the flyer that Maria just um, briefly went over um, that gives you a very detailed look at um, eligibility, how you apply for the grants and other help that's available through Ramsey County. All right. So with that said, we will launch into um, the next phase of this discussion. Please use the chat box if you have questions for Maria and her team. Um, we will be monitoring that and um, getting those questions over to the team. Um, I'm not seeing any come in that right now. Maria, I have a question um, for you around benefits. If I'm receiving benefits from other Ramsey County programs, would I still qualify for the grant programs and assistance through Veterans Services? That's a great question, Sarah. Thanks for asking that. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, in fact, you would. Um, eligibility for uh, these specific benefits for veterans um, is, is not impacted by eligibility for other programs. In fact, um, Ramsey County Veterans Services is very interested in making sure that people are connected to um, other public assistance benefits that are offered by our partners in financial assistance services, social services, and public health, um, to name a few. So, yeah, you can be eligible, for example, for food support and get a COVID grant. You can be eligible for a COVID special needs grant and be on MFIP. You can um, be eligible for, for example, VA medical care and be on MA. Um, the, the benefits that are available to veterans are in no way um, impacted by um, the receipt of public assistance or um, being eligible for those benefits. Thank you. It looks like we do have a question in the chat box. Um, what is the turnaround time for receiving the benefits that you just discussed, Maria? Um, if, if we're talking specifically about the state grant, which is the COVID grant, um, the state is actually um, monitoring and responsible largely for that process. So um, they have to date received about uh, 4,000 applications requests for the grant and right now their processing time frame is about 52 days um, for those benefits. So what we would want to do is try and um, advocate and support um, just understanding that your, your application has been received and hopefully provide you with whatever kind of assistance that we're able to while you are waiting for that benefit. 
Thank you, Maria. I think the same question came in um, around the turnaround time for the grant. Um, what if a, the, a veteran has received the once in a lifetime grant? Can they receive these grants? Yes, so that question has to do with the regular special needs grant that is offered by the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, so that typically would be a once in a lifetime grant and it pays for expenses like I described, like rent, mortgage, utilities, things like that. Um, so if you have in fact already received a special needs grant, you are still eligible to apply for a COVID disaster grant or a COVID special needs grant. Um, these are grants that are in addition to those regularly provided for benefits from MDVA. So yes, you would be able to apply for that benefit. Other questions, community? Um, is the county reaching out to homeless veterans for these grants? And I would say if yes or no, how or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll turn to my staff. Um, we have um, several staff that are fully engaged with the effort to end veteran homelessness. Um, Christina Rost, uh, Kristen Nord, and Christopher Vinden are all participating. Chris is our uh, veteran outreach worker, so he works direct, directly with veterans experiencing homelessness in the community. Um, and when Chris encounters a veteran, um, and Chris, you can jump in here anywhere that you'd like, or Kristen, um, they will connect with one another to um, verify what that particular veteran's need is, what their circumstances are, and if they feel like that's, if this is the time, they absolutely would apply for those benefits. Absolutely. Uh, yes, I, I engage with all our veterans that we are working with and have notified them. Uh, a lot of the veterans that I have been engaged with, I mean, uh, haven't been impacted. They're out in the street right now and haven't lost anything. Uh, but they are well aware they can reach out. You know, they have been educated on this grant that answers that question. Thanks, Chris. Marianne, team. Um, are these grants happening in other counties in Minnesota? Example, Hennepin County, other counties. Um, the, the MDVA, the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs grant is the COVID grant is available in all counties in Minnesota. It's, so it's, it's available throughout the state and veteran service officers throughout the state are available to try and support and assist um, in wherever you're located. So if you're living in Hennepin, um, Hennepin County can help you. Um, the, the veteran service officer. Um, you know, I think oftentimes if people are homeless though, wherever they are is where they ask for help and Ramsey County is available to serve um, as needed um, to support any kind of uh, needs that veterans have. Uh, but yes, they are, they're, all, they're statewide. All right, um, let's see, Jim said awesome, thanks. Um, what you know you talked a little bit about Christopher and Maria about the outreach efforts what outreach efforts have been happening with veterans specifically and do you have questions also for the community on how to best reach veterans during this time I think it's a challenging time for, for everyone so yes the efforts that have been made is that we have teamed up with other nonprofits in conducting street outreach by engaging veterans directly at their encampment sites and other um, like the homeless shelters around the metro area we are also connected very tight with uh, staff members that will report to us if you know a particular veteran who may be staying there and we go engage um, keep them how do you put it showing support is uh will establish benefit you know is establish the rapport with the veterans and let them know what what they are eligible for and especially in the the waiting period that could take to obtain housing it's it's good that we engage with those veterans on a constant basis 
to support them and keep them engaged so they don't start thinking um you know when 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 stuff starts taking a long time um they could disappear so we don't want to allow that to happen does that answer the question i think so yeah chris it, um I think one of the things that we do is we have had a long term partnership with um, the Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans with the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs with the Veterans Administration. And we use a tool called the homeless veteran registry. And so that group, those those partners among others as well, mm -hmm. radius people Inc, um, and many others um, meet. Uh, bi-weekly and they review the list of people who are homeless and vet veterans that are homeless in Ramsey County. Um, and I think by doing that, they uh, um, attempt to ensure that somebody is always making that connection for veterans. And I think this is a reason that veterans have actually succeeded in responding to homelessness um, more effectively. And I think right now, um, that you know, other uh, uh, partners that are working in that area are looking on to um, uh, understand better how it works to use a by name registry to try and uh, um, respond and be, stay connected to veterans. Um, so I think, though, I think one of the things I'd like to know is, you know, are there places, are there locations that that people think that you know, maybe we could better connect with veterans. Is there a place that we, places that we might be missing um, where um, you and the community have encountered veterans? I know um, I had a call one evening from Max Holthusen saying that he had a, and he is another Ramsey County employee, that he had a veteran that was in his yard and um, Chris actually, I was able to reach Chris and he went straight, straight over there. So that kind of immediate connection is really helpful to us. Does anyone in the community have any suggestions for us around that? Thank you, Marie. Feel free to put them in the chat box. And then you can also, if you're directly on the phone, um, feel free to unmute yourself and provide some um, recommendations. So I put the question in the chat box, are there locations um, that people think veteran services can better connect with veterans? We do have a few questions, Maria, while we're waiting. Um, and um, if you are homeless, um, you are seen as having nothing to lose in regards to the COVID-19 veterans relief grants. Is this correct? Um, I think one of the eligibility factors for the COVID grant is that you have your income has to have been impacted by something that is COVID related. For example, layoff or your hours were cut or you've lost your child care or um, some other factor. And so I think what Chris was describing is that, you know, so often people that are living in homelessness um, are, um, have either minimal income, they have social security income, perhaps they have GA income. Um, some have social security, some have jobs, some do have jobs. So there would be those that would be um, impacted by COVID if their hours were cut or they had difficulty in transportation, for example. Um, but I think um, some of those more stable income sources would not be impacted. Um, and so I think that is that is an eligibility factor for those grants. And Maria, I know we took um, just a moment to look at the flyer earlier. Do you want to talk a little bit about the eligibility for the grants? I think we we kind of sure. did. Do you want me to, I can even share my screen also. Sure. That's helpful. Okay, I'll do that again. So I think that we're getting a lot of questions in regards to that. Let me move this over. And we will get to the questions that are in the chat box. Thank you for your patience. So um, I, I think I mentioned that you have to actually be a veteran by the state definition. And so the, the state has a fairly specific um, definition is 180 days not for training. So if you were a Guard or Reserve member and you had not deployed for 180 days or more, you would not be considered eligible by the state's definition. So that's the first um, requirement. Um, you have to have experienced a financial loss since March 13th of this year. Um, and that would be directly related to the COVID pandemic. So those things I mentioned, like loss or reduction of income, um, loss of childcare, 
um, experiencing um, problems with transportation. Um, and, you know, I can tell you from what I've heard from the staff that, you know, there's been a huge spectrum of impact. I, I, I barely touched on the things that happen for families and individuals around this pandemic that can um, cause them to experience loss of income. And, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, even a, even a minor cut in hours to a household that is depending on income, it, it can cause, you know, significant problems. So that is one of the requirements. Um, you have to be a Minnesota resident. Um, that is uh, the other requirement. Now for the special needs grant, there are much more specific requirements. Um, and, you know, that eligibility would be um, determined on a case-by-case -case basis based on proofs that they require. So they require that you verify, for example, um, what the expense is. So if you are behind on your rent um, two or three months or you're behind on your mortgage or your utility bill, for example, if you have a car repair um, for example, um, those would be proofs that would be required for the $3,000 grant, um, in addition to verifying those eligibility factors I mentioned previously. Um, we have a partner actually who's uh, with us um, at the town hall, um, Nathaniel Saltz from Minnesota Assistance Council for Veterans, and he mentioned that he is happy to jump in and talk about eligibility for SSVF, which is another benefit. Um, Nathaniel. Thanks, Maria. As the conversation has, has come around to be talking about veterans that are experiencing homelessness. At MACV, we work with veterans that are homeless or at, in crisis at risk of homelessness. We have additional funds right now through our federal VA grant called Supported Services for Veteran Families that does expand our ability for veterans that are living unsheltered to be placed into hotels or veterans that are in congregate shelter for, for the purposes of safety and, and social distancing. Um, another opportunity that this affords us is when we're working with veterans that don't have a regular way to stay in touch with the outreach staff that are working with them. Having somebody in a hotel, there's, there's a phone in the room and it gives us opportunities to to connect and work with people around long-term housing solutions. So in addition to what the, the county is doing, what the state is doing, a lot of these federal resources are coming in through our organization. We also have additional prevention resources as well for homelessness. So if rent is not able to be paid and, and there's a potential housing crisis, this is another tool for that as well. Um, you can reach out to MACV, directly. I'll put our phone number in the chat box and our website. Also, if a veteran connects up with the Ramsey County Veteran Service Office, Maria and her team are also very aware of what we're able to do and can make that referral to us too. Okay. Thank you, Nathaniel. Yes. Appreciate that. Yes, please put your contact information, website information into the chat box and we'll capture that via our notes for the town hall. So I want to turn it over to some of the questions that are coming in from community. Um, we look like it looks like we have a question um, from Dan. What a, what um, is there for homeless veterans that come down with COVID nineteen? Are they able to be transported to the VA um, for smelling treatment? Um, so just questions around folks that may contract COVID nineteen. What's what are resources for them? Uh, I think there are a couple of options that we'd want to talk about in relation to somebody that actually came down with COVID. Because um, if you were identified as symptomatic by Chris, for example, or any of our partners that might be working with homeless veterans, um, you know, they would immediately get you connected with um, the, the nurse and um, health staff that works with the outreach team. Um, and in most cases, we might want to try and get you into either an ER or some other location just to make sure of, you know, your symptoms and get you um, tested and diagnosed as quickly as possible. You could certainly go to the VA Medical uh, Center. Um, that would be an option. Transportation is always a challenge. Um, here in Ramsey County, we have a great partnership with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department, and so they do help us with transporting people from encampment sites, locations, for example, to Mary Hall, for example, um, to um, 
get testing and get care. Um, so it might depend upon what your circumstances were. And I think the outreach staff, Chris and our partners from Radius and PeopleLink and um, others out in the field every day meeting people who are living um, in encampments and other locations not meant for human habitation, they would probably make the judgment call about what's the fastest way to connect this individual with um, the right kind of health care. Um, and it could be as close as St. Joe's. I mean, you know, that's like the closest hospital or regions. Um, so when you say, could they go to the VA Medical Center? Yes, they could, but it might depend on that person's situation. Right. And make sure you call each center before we would bring anybody there, just for the safety of staff and the patients, of course, so they can make the accommodations when we arrive. Thank you. Um, our next question is, is there a hotline? I think you gave out the phone number for veteran services. Are there other hotlines, Maria and team, that um, folks should be aware of? Yeah, the, the, the hotline or the basic, the primary contact line is the veterans linkage line. I have to look at it. <laughs> um, it's 1-888-LINK-VET is the number. Um, and we could put that in the chat. Um, could one of you guys maybe type that in the chat for me? Um, and you know, those numbers I had to translate. I'd have to be looking at my phone to translate 1888. <laughs> yes, please put it in the chat box and we'll capture it too. I'm trying to type monitor <laughs> and facilitate. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, the VA, VA also operates crisis lines and um, mm -hmm. we can make sure that that information gets out. And that, those would be for things like mental health crisis and other. Um, so we can make sure that information is made available as well. Thank you. All right, we'll continue with the question. Um, the question is, um, I think we kind of, Dan, we kind of, and let me know, Dan, if we didn't address this, but around procedures, I think we talked a little bit about that. Um, you're actually unmuted too, Dan, if you, if you want to chime in, but even procedures for homeless veterans that come down with um, COVID. Did we address that, Dan? Thumbs up, thumbs down. That's all right. Here, I'll unmute you. Yeah. Yeah. One second. Go ahead. Yeah, you're you addressed, yeah, you addressed it. Thank you. you addressed it. Yep. Thanks, Dan. All right. And then from June, how many veterans have reached out so far to you and how much funding is still available and how long will the grant run? Um, yeah. Um, my uh, staff person, my coworker here, William Nygaard, has done, spent a lot of time kind of analyzing that. Um, William, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, you want to run that question again by me? Yeah, well, it, it basically says, how many veterans have reached out so far in June? I assume you're talking about during this time period. How much funding is available? And then how long will the grant run? As far as the amount of funding is $6.2 million. And that's going to be broken across the $1,000 grant and the $3,000 special needs grant. Uh, as far as how many claims have come through, somewhere around 4,000. 4, uh, there's still quite a few pending. Uh, we have gotten 35 approved since the 6th of April uh, that have been paid out. Uh, we have quite a few more pending. Does that answer, that answer your question? Thanks, William. And one, one last thing, as far as timeline, that's going to be up to the state, mm -hmm. how long this will run. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see, other questions. There's no other questions in the inbox. I think the question earlier that the group had, the team of veteran services had, is about reaching out to community as the county. Um, how best can we reach out to communities? Um, we have a number of, of, of veterans in our community based on race, ethnicity, age, geography. Um, and so we want to be inclusive right around our outreach strategies and, and making sure we get the word out about the grants and also how vets can be reached um, during this time and beyond. So any ideas that um, people have, please put those in the chat box. We can get that information over to Maria and her team. Um, team, are there questions for community? Chime in, Kristen, Christina, any of you that might have questions for community? 
Um, I don't have a question right now, but I just wanted to clarify that um, veterans who are homeless who maybe have lot, not lost income during the COVID time, um, they still would be eligible for other grants that could help them get into housing. So there's a lot of different voucher programs and other programs and other ways we might be able to help them increase their income either through Veterans Comp or, or Veterans Pension if they're eligible or helping them access general assistance or helping them through the MDVA SOAR program apply for social security. Um, and then, um, then they might need the, some monies just to get into an apartment uh, for deposit and first month's rent and moving costs and things like that if they have to move items out of storage. So there are grants, the, the regular special needs grants that's available once in a lifetime for, for, for qualifying veterans. And then there's other programs like what Nathaniel mentioned, the, um, the SSBF funds and things like that. So there's, there is some funding for those things. I would like to mention uh, to everybody out there that if they are in need or interested in getting information on the grants, is to contact our office and we can mail out the overview, the applications, uh, the email or mail it out to their physical address if they do not have email. You know, and contact our office. Thank you. And um, the office number is 651-266-2545. And you can also reach the Veteran Services Office via email at askveteranservice at co.ramsey.mn.us. Um, June, I know you just asked the question around getting flyers of the information that we posted. So please, um, you can definitely send um, us an email if you don't want to put your information, your, your um, mailing information in, in the chat box. You can email us at racialequity at ramseycounty.us. I'll put that in the chat. We can definitely get that information over to you. We'll also post the PowerPoint, the meeting notes, and this entire recording on our Ramsey County website. We had a suggestion, um, care bags with necessities and information. Um, could be a way, could be a helpful thing. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I'm glad somebody bought that up. Um, you know, I, I, when you're talking about care bags, I'm assuming that you are, are you talking about for homeless or are you talking about for people in general? Um, I'd be very curious to know. Um, we'd be absolutely happy to do something like that. And I'm glad that Kristen brought up that we do have other sources of funding um, that we can, we have a little bit more flexibility around. So uh, care bags with information would be a great thing to do. If, you know, if you wanted to provide some specifics of what that might look like, we'd be happy to do that. Rich, go ahead and if you're on the call, you can definitely um, um, respond to Maria's questions or feel free to put it in the chat box also. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the call. I'm with my little guy trying to get him calmed down. So oh. sorry about that. Yeah, mom's taking a nap. So me and Julie had to, had to hang out and work today. Mm. Thank you um, for joining us. Yeah, of course. You will say thank you. So, um, yeah, I, th I brought the care bags just for both, you know, people, everyone's hurting right now, not only homeless that are already going through it and been going through it, but folks that are in housing and just a little unstable right now. So when I'm, when I was talking necessities, I guess for homeless, um, you know, maybe the bare necessities, um, mm -hmm. uh, dry goods that maybe they could eat, uh, maybe some jodin or something like that, just something to pique their interest. And then the information card with a hotline that they can call. Cause you know, with homeless folks, it's hard to, be on a nine to five schedule or called during a certain time. Um, and their moments of clarity, I mean, let's just be honest, sometimes there's mental health issues, there's chemical dependency issues. So their moment of clarity may not be between nine and five. They may have that moment of, you know, that light coming on at 1 a.m. or whenever it is, and they should be able to reach out at that time. Um, for folks that, that are just a little unstable, maybe in housing, maybe some household goods, maybe gift cards or something like that, you know? Um, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like, you can draw people in with uh, food and then give them information. That's usually how it works when we can, when we can you know, uh, a fellowship. Awesome, Rich. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, cutest baby. Gift um, cards are good. Yeah, gift cards are good. Um, and we, we actually do do a lot of that kind of work out of our offices. We've been fortunate to have some great partners in the community. Um, that have helped us with um, gift cards, gas cards, um, 
And, you know, I think th that's a great suggestion and he makes an outstanding point that, you know, there, there may be options. Um, I know that um, Ramsey is working really hard right now on identifying how they can serve people with food and with other resources. Um, and I think m making connections there as well would be awesome. So thanks for that suggestion though. That's just really an awesome, awesome suggestion, Rich, thanks. Maria, on, on the flyer, there was mention around spousal support, people that um, may have been spouses of veterans. Can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in that area? I think sometimes with community that can be vague, if you're not a veteran, um, oftentimes people don't know, we've had this conversation, that they're eligible yes. for services. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, we really want to, you know, hit home the fact that we serve um, all um, all people that uh, are, might be related to um, a veteran. So if you're the surviving spouse, for example, of a veteran who served, um, then we're here to serve you, um, that population, um, the families of veterans. Um, we're here to serve the people that are advocating for veterans. So yeah, um, there are benefits available to the spouse of a veteran, including um, potential eligibility for the special needs grant, for um, dental and optical benefits, um, for a whole spectrum of benefits that are available from the Veterans Administration. Um, and, you know, without actually having some pretty solid knowledge, it's really challenging if you, I, I am sure all of us have experienced going to a website and, and just feeling like, oh my gosh, um, I don't even know where to start. So that's part of the reason that we exist is so that we can be there to support with education information and making the connections for you. So if you are the surviving spouse of a veteran, if you're the spouse of a veteran who has questions um, and that veteran is maybe busy, um, if you have family um, and uh, you know are a veteran, um, please reach out to us and, and we're here to help. I'd like to add, uh, beside VA benefits that we provided assistance with for widows, that we, I've seen applications come through for the COBA grant, uh, special needs grant, and then the regular uh, state special needs grant, uh, as far as even including getting hearing aids for widows. So there's a wide variety of things that we can assist uh, with helping widows of veterans. So, so refer them to our office. Awesome, thanks for bringing that up, William. Maria, how is Veteran Services even connecting with the Health and Wellness Service Team? You know, it's a huge service team, taking that holistic approach. Um, I know that your office, you're, you're probably our smallest office within Health and Wellness, but you do a lot of work in community. You have a target audience. It's really important to um, Ramsey County. And so how, how, how are you, you talked a little bit about that in the beginning, but making those connections so that people know about the services that you have outside of Veteran Services. Yeah, um, I think uh, the service, the development of service teams and Karen, my boss, Karen, um, described that a little bit. She had a slide there that kind of showed us um, as part of the, the team that includes corrections, public health, financial assistance services, social services, and healthcare services. Um, so we are the little, little one. Um, but it's been a huge boon to us to be a part of the service team. So we are, um, we've always made an effort to partner with our, um, our partner departments, FAS, social services, public health, corrections. Um, but this has offered us the opportunity to actually have a much more direct relationship um, and to cultivate um, those systems that will help us to kind of promote um, other benefit sets. So um, that was one of the great advantages. I can tell you right now that Kristen Nord, um, our social worker, is with us because of a partnership with social services. Um, we identified the need to do more um, longer term case management for folks and try and be more supportive. And they gave us a position. Um, Chris Vinden is here um, in Veteran Services because of our partnership and association with Corrections. So we identified the need to serve homeless veterans and veterans who were involved in our justice system and our Corrections Department came forward and supported us. So 
Um, we really do make an effort to actually be aware of what is available and to provide that direct connection to people. So when you come and talk to us about benefits, um, we actually have those connections within those departments. We understand the benefits, for example, medical assistance or food support or um, you know, child um, mental health, adult uh, protection services. Um, we're connected with probation and all of that through the Veterans Court. So it, it really actually does uh, make a big difference for the people that we serve that we are part of this larger service team. Thank you. For our veterans that are on the phone, families of veterans, just concerned residents, um, any future town hall topics that you'd want Maria and her team to, to talk about? Um, during this time, but also um, in the future. I think this is an opportunity, a creative way to engage with community now that we're not in person, um, but we're in person <laughs> virtually. And I know we're kind of zoom, zoomed out, right? Um, but we want to keep this energy energy going and this um, dialogue with community is, is really important to Ramsey County. So if you have ideas about future um, topics for the Veteran Services team, you can put those in the chat um, or definitely mention them here on the call. Feel free to unmute yourself. Right. Other Hi, questions? Jackie. Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? I used to work for Ramsey County um, for about maybe nine years uh, with uh, Commissioner Tony Carter. I was her physical assistant. Oh, yes. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? I'm not showing myself. I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to see me. You'll hear me. But not <laughs> Okay, at least. That's okay. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to send a chat message, but I, I, don't, I evidently you know this technology is all new, so I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to do it. That's so cool. I said, well, I'll just ask the question. You know, I've never been shy. So <laughs> uh, I wanted to find out, very good discussion about veterans and um, needs of veterans. And I just wanted to find out, is there, because of the COVID-19 virus, is there um, ways that um, families, veterans, can access um, money, um, you know, if large funds to assist them with, um, you know, they need to uh, pay the rent or they need to, you know, but you know, well, buying food, I don't think it's a problem to get SNAP or something, you know, in relation to veterans on um, food shelves and stuff like that. A lot of food has been given out to um, families and veterans. But uh, what do they do for just, you know, additional kinds of things that they may need, toiletries, um, you know, just whatever the case may be. Um, is there special funds that, that are available for that? Um, you know, I've heard about the medical uh, assistance and things of that nature, but you know, what else is available for veterans? I would like to bring, beside all these other things we've talked about, that we have the Beyond the Yellow Ribbon of St. Paul, which has uh, funds available for certain instances. So it depends on the situation, but the best thing to do is contact our office to see okay. how we can assist. Okay, I joined late, so you probably said it. Okay, so contact yeah. your office. Yeah, I think Jackie that you know there are there are some state grants that are available right now. We did talk about those, and um, I think we're going to be sharing a flyer, so you'll have that information as well. Um, you have but, my email address, or how how do you know? Oh, I'd love to put it in the chat, but you said you can't put it in the chat. I can't do this chat. I'm trying to figure. I, I can't, Jackie, I, I, I can. I can for you. I can put it in the chat. So we okay, can. good. Okay, you want my email address now? Yep. Okay. It's Celeste, C-E-L-E-S-C-E-C-O-O-P-E-R-5-1 at gmail.com. Jackie, mm -hmm. I'm going to get your phone. I'm going to reach out to you afterwards. Because <laughs> I couldn't okay. keep up with that. So, okay. so okay. I will, I'm if sorry, you just want to stay on, stay on the Zoom line when we end, I'll get all the information okay. from you, okay? Okay, thank you, sweetie. I'm trying all to right. type in, um, that's okay. awesome. Um, it's awesome you? to see you, Jackie. <laughs> Sorry not to see you. <laughs> been talking to you, too. Uh, if you do more of these, I just want to be involved. So, yeah, Thank that'll you. be good. Sarah, um, I'll stay on. Thank you. And then, June, do you have a question, too? We noticed that you unmuted. Um, yes. Uh, bonjour. Uh, my name is June Blue. I'm a third-generation veteran. Um, my grandfather, my father, and four of his... Um, 
his five brothers and then myself were all in the military. Um, I wanted to um, ask about, I know there has um, been a, a huge, I, I'm kind of shy, so there is a huge um, gathering that they have once a year, and I'm not sure when that is. Um, that, that veterans can have access to a lot of different things. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if there is something um, that is being planned instead of having such a, a large one, like many, um, many uh, community engagements for people there that can help veterans fill out paperwork right now. Um, of course, with social distancing and and all the CDC recommendations, but um, you know, as a person that was homeless once myself, having access, like how, like you said, going to a website. My um, my uncle, who is a Vietnam veteran, um, said he went down to Ramsey County to get that that thousand dollars, that once in a lifetime thing. This is a while ago, and he sat down there for a long time, and he didn't get any help, and so he just got up and left. Um, and so what I'm asking is like direct access for veterans, meet them where they're at, um, you know, rather than having them come to, to you. So, um, yeah, thank you. I'd like to comment. I know she's referring to the veteran stand down, which is usually in August and they, uh, Nathaniel might want to address that, uh, as far as what's going to happen with that, uh, and I'll turn that over to him. Yeah, thank you. So right now we're still planning on it for September, realizing that it's probably, that's probably just wishful thinking. But one of the things we started thinking about a few months ago and that now is the time to move it forward and we're starting to plan around is doing a virtual stand down. So having the service providers that would normally be at the stand down event all available at the same time to connect either triage by phone or virtually um, in an online platform where we can identify what it is that the veteran is looking for and having the right service providers available immediately to make that connection to. So we're thinking about how we can do this to fulfill the need now during uh, COVID-19 and how this can become a best practice long-term knowing that not everybody's available on the one or day a year that we have a stand down and that we need to figure out other, other avenues to make this type of one-stop service available. Thank That's you. a great question. Yeah, thanks, Nathaniel. I wanted to respond to June's um, inquiry about meeting veterans where they are. Um, our department has always done home visiting and meeting people in the community, um, wherever that might be. Um, now we are like somewhat limited here as we all are um, just by the circumstances and you mentioned June you kind of acknowledged that that's uh, that's the current barrier that we're working around but um, I think you know we could we could probably arrange something if we knew specifically like where that person um, lives at and maybe we could figure something out. Um, and I think when asked what our greatest challenge is, that is among, that's on the list of our greatest challenges um, during COVID is that we can't be as directly responsive to people where they live. And that's always been a part of the model that we do here is to meet with people in their homes or other locations that are convenient to them. Um, and right now it's just a lot more challenging, but we don't want to shut down the conversation. So, you know, please feel free to contact us and I'd like to talk with you about that. Thank you, Maria and group. Thank you, Jim, for your questions and everyone's questions. Um, just really briefly, I think you talked a little bit about this, but how are you communicating these opportunities to veterans? So I think you mentioned that early on, Maria, but I think the creativeness and the fact that we have these barriers right now with COVID-19, what are some opportunities to communicate and do outreach with our veterans in Ramsey County? 
Um, well, we do, of course, do the in-person and partnership outreaching that we do through other agencies and partners like MACV and VA and MDVA. Um, but we are also very interested in exploring whatever possibilities we can. So we are active on Facebook and we do put a lot of information on Facebook. Um, we are one of the last Facebook departments standing here in Ramsey County. Um, and we also do mailings and we do outreach using our um, email listserv from our data system. Um, so um, we're trying to think of um, any way that we can to like be more available to people during these COVID times. And sometimes that means just doing better connections with our partners. Um, for example, the libraries, the senior community centers, the faith communities, um, really interested in making those connections with networks of other people so that we are making sure that we're getting the word out um, as effectively as we can all over the, the communities of Ramsey County. Thank you. And so I'm gonna wrap up with some resources and information. Back to our PowerPoint. One second. I want to make sure you all have Maria's contact information. All right, so if you have additional questions for Veteran Services, feel free to reach out to Maria Weatherall, phone number 651-266-2544, um, and we will share the email address of Maria and her team, definitely via the website. Please, if you have joined us midway through, please put your name and your contact information and your agency in the chat box. You can send that privately to Amy or I, Amy Zhang or I, um, so we have that information. Just community resources, again, for COVID-19 resources, there are a number of um, resources on our Ramsey County website. Um, and so if you just um, Google Ramsey County US COVID-19, you'll get those community resources. We also have a customer or resident assistance line at 651-266-8500, and that is also open from 8 to 430. Um, and so a number of community resources on the website, financial assistance, housing, veterans, of course, domestic abuse resources, a number of things that have come up around mental health resources. We do have adult mental health crisis lines and children mental health crisis lines, food resources, immigration wraparound, um, technology help, um, and then our, of course our modified library services. Um, we do have a number of town halls that will still be taking place. Tomorrow we have public health um, response and services town hall, and that is from 4 to 5 p.m. We um, Next Monday we have community corrections, and then following Tuesday to wrap up our community um, town halls with the health and wellness service team is housing stability, and Maria and some of her team hopefully will be joining that town hall um, because housing, of course, is a huge topic. If you do have questions for us prior to the town hall meeting, feel free to send that information to us at the racial equity at Ramsey County us. I want to thank you all on behalf of Ramsey County, but also on behalf of the Racial Equity and Community Engagement Response Team. If you have questions, again, please email us at racialequity at ramseycounty.us. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, everyone. I'm still on. Great. Jackie, you go ahead and stay on. Okay.